when we were thinking about this session, the Creative Entrepreneurs Panel, um, connecting different generations, we're trying to think of what would be the most useful and interactive way to discuss how do we take our ventures and have the most change by engaging the demographics we want, but also working across generations to leverage the experience of the more exp experienced entrepreneurs, and then that enthusiasm and zeal um, of emerging entrepreneurs. The three of us have three different ventures, all engaging completely different demographics, and our goal is to share our experiences and then also learn from you and see if we can come up with best practices. My name is Joe Opot, and I am the Global Vice President for Business Development at TerraCycle. TerraCycle, our goal is to eliminate the idea of waste and we focus on anything that's non-recyclable or hard to recycle. The key here is giving value to everything that's considered waste and finding a new way of monetizing it, but also making it at a price point where it can be sold at Walmart and Home Depot as opposed to a premium eco product. I'm, I'm Tejira Vilochin from the Unreasonable Institute. The Unreasonable Institute is a uh, mentor-driven uh, accelerator program for entrepreneurs that are addressing social and environmental problems from all over the world. Um, so we bring out about 25 entrepreneurs each year, and we bring out you know 60 different mentors, um, some of whom are, are SBNers like Joy Anderson, some of whom are people like the uh, CTO of HP, the co-founder of Google.org, who, who work with uh, these entrepreneurs to, to help create their businesses um, and launch them into things that can be financially viable and scale to uh, at least a million people. I'm Elizabeth Sharp. I run She Sustainable Health Enterprises. Right now in Rwanda, our first initiative is actually She 28 campaign to address the problem of millions of girls and women missing school and work because menstrual pads are too expensive. And um, so what we're doing is jump-starting local businesses to distribute and actually now manufacture affordable pads using agro-waste. I'd like to dive into the challenges and start with she as what do you see as the hardest demographic for you to engage with and how are you working around that? Well, um, one could say my, my business is the menstruation business and um, that's pretty taboo all around the world. Not surprisingly, um, our greatest challenge in demographic is actually older men. My father still says that I work in the healthcare industry. Um, but you know what, surprisingly, uh, they, they've, invested, they've invested the most. Me, um, men, especially older men, have invested the most money in our venture, but the least time. And exactly the opposite. Um, women have invested the most time, but the least money. Talking about the issues of incentivizing our global workforce. Uh, when I talk about uh, creating a franchise model, what and when we go global, should we keep, what should we keep on our balance sheet? When I talk about how Walmart called us up last week and they just bought their first retail chain in Africa, what should we do about this conversation? That's when it gets really exciting for um, people like my dad, let's say. What is the most difficult demographic for us to reach? Amongst the first is actually um, probably large mainstream corporations who don't care about necessarily much more than their, their bottom line and convincing them that there's a viable profit model in serving the needs of you know, the, the four billion people who live on about $3 a day or less. Um, and that's, that's really why the Unreasonable Institute exists. Um, you know, it exists for, for two reasons. One is you know, this, this fundamental belief that we can't afford to send this next generation of entrepreneurs into the world unprepared to tackle its greatest challenges. But at the same time, that social enterprise is going to spin its wheels unless it's able to convince mainstream business that there is profit to be made in serving these virgin, untapped markets. I think, interestingly, another demographic that's difficult for us to reach often is, is women. Um, partner. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, absolutely. Um, and, you know, part of the reason is in soliciting applications and in, in, in engaging with mentors, um, for some reason there are fewer women. I suspect that there are a few reasons for that, um, but um, that's, that's also a, a demographic that we'd like to work with much more into the future. TerraCycle's toughest demographics. Um, since we're in 14 countries and we're dealing with waste streams that are traditionally seen as trash, we need to rethink our model every time 
we replicate it in the new environment. In the US, you download a free UPS shipping label from our website. In Mexico, um, we have a deal with DHL whereby they drop you free shipping label. In Brazil, um, it's working with the uh, Catadores, which is the informal cooperatives that go street by street picking up paper and bottles and cans from people's trash and then cash that in. Rethinking the model to engage a demographic in each country has been a big challenge. Taking into consideration the generational divide, the gender divide, the country divide. What are the, the key findings from your own conversations in terms of questions for the panel? Um, but also things you're noticing amongst yourself. Demographic challenges are not about them, they're about us. That the models that we develop uh, may raise gates that prevent people from entering what we want them to enter. There's really rich, diverse conversations even within the same values kind of organization. And I think being accepting of diversity of thought, not just diversity of color and diversity of situation is really, really important. The beauty of being in a community and being in a business that has a wide variety of, of, of diversity and inclusion, I think that that creates a more rich environment and a really more dynamic culture. And at the same time, the most important issue of all these things is the values. When I'm in a conversation with people on my team we all, that are sharing the same values, the differences in a certain sense disappear. People in the 20s right now are having a heck of a lot more in common with some of the things that those of us in our 60s are doing right now. That generation is just like green to the bone in so many cases. And there's this really strong connection with a lot of these kids in the 20s, with some of us who have started these things you know, back in the, back in the 18th century. And, um, We're all really good at figuring out the win-win for uh, business ventures when we're looking at partnerships with either other entrepreneurs or other companies. Um, I think there's room for us to use that thinking and methodology when engaging with individuals and different demographics.